Good morning. I bring you greetings today from over 240 missionaries who are serving on your behalf in over 40 countries around the world. 63 of them are young adults in global mission who are serving as volunteers for a year at a time in eight different countries. And then there are also people who have received scholarships through you and me, through our church, and they're pursuing their education. They're coming from different countries, and they are going to serve in the church the rest of their lives, thanks to you and to me. And I'm also greeting you on behalf of our global companions in many different countries, in over 80 different countries, who we are working together with in Christ's ministry. So I bring you those greetings. So imagine that the walls of this church have just expanded a great deal from those that are sitting here right now. It has been a wonderful time here with you this weekend. What a wonderful congregation you have, so hospitable. And I'd like to, in particular, thank my hosts for this weekend, um, Kate and Dick Carlson, who I should tell you are also my cousins as well, okay? And then I had another pleasant surprise this morning because Pastor Bruce Miller and his wife Norma and their son Hans are visiting as well. Raise your hands, please. Okay, I'm going to embarrass you just a little bit. He was my internship supervisor in Monticello, Minnesota, and it was a few years ago, and we're not going to tell him how many are we. Okay, very good. Um, what I'd like to do today, if we're talking about a Global Mission Sunday, is I'm going to ask for your forbearance, and I'm going to see if you're willing to take a little trip with me. Okay, you thought you were all settled, but now let's just, at least in our minds, take a trip. So you're getting onto the airplane, and the stewardess says, put your seats in an upright position, fasten your seat belts, and what's the other thing that you've got to do? Turn off all portable electronic devices, so make sure that they're off, and we're going to take a little trip. We're going to go back in time to the lesson that we just heard from the gospel lesson, and we're going to hear a little bit more about what Jesus has to say, but then we're going to come back to this present day. This is going to be not just a regular airplane, but a time machine as well, and we are going to take a little trip to the other side of the world and finally end up right here to see how we are living out Jesus' prayer right here and now. So, are you ready for the trip? Okay, everybody? Yeah, I see a lot of heads nodding. You're ready to go. Very good. In the scripture lesson that we just heard, Jesus prays a prayer. And it's woven through your liturgy and your prayers and your hymns today. And the key phrase that jumps out as if Jesus were speaking to us right here, right now, which he is, of course, is that they may all be one. This is his prayer to God, that they may all be one. Now, who's he speaking about? His disciples in the room. Obviously, the world was not all one. There were fights, wars, violence. The Romans were oppressing the Jews and many other people. The Jews didn't get along always together. And so it was in that context that Jesus said that they may all be one. And why was that? So that the world would see the unity that God has in the unity of their fellowship. It was for the sake of witness and mission and outreach that he prayed that they would all be one. Now, do we need that message today? What do you think? Okay. If we come back to the current time, don't we need that message Shouldn't we say that prayer even more today? I mean, look at the headlines that come at us and the various places in which the world is not one. And yet within that, Jesus' prayer that we may be one is even more important. Now, 
I'm director of the ELCA program called Global Church Sponsorship, and I've alluded to different things, and at the forum we'll talk a little bit more about it, but I work with these missionaries, these young adults in global mission, these scholarship recipients, and these wonderful ministries of outreach around the world. And this is one way that we can make real Jesus' prayer, that we may be one, because within this crazy world that we live in, the church can act in a united way in giving witness to the world. Now, what I'd like to do is ask just kind of a, a little question here for you. It's kind of a trick question. Um, and the question is this. How many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Change? <laughs> okay. Now, the answer is often Lutherans don't change, and I think we're actually better at it than we give ourselves credit. But we, we're also good at poking fun at ourselves. Good for us. But let's turn that question on its head and ask a related question. That Actually, this is a trick question too, but it's much more serious. How many Lutherans does God have? to change the world. How many Lutherans does God have to change the world? Do you know that there are 72 million Lutherans in the Lutheran World Federation in over 145 different denominations like ours all around the world? And God is changing the world one life at a time, one day at a time through each one of these Lutherans. Amazing. Now, in the ELCA, we are four million Lutherans. We're a minority within this global church. And so this is one of the joys that we get to do, is to participate in something that is bigger than us, that makes great things happen, through which you and I can make a difference. This is the global church in which we are engaged today. And now I'd like to take our next leg of the journey and I'd like to go over to Russia, to the country where, whether you realize it or not, you are already making a difference. You have been sponsors for Pastor Braden Berkeley. His name is spelled in such a way that I think everybody pronounces it a little differently, okay? But that's what I understand is the pronunciation Braden Berkeley. And he has been a missionary in Russia. He's been invited by the uh, Lutheran Church in Russia and also by the German mission organization that works with them because many of the, German, or the Lutherans in Russia came from a Germanic background from centuries ago. And they have invited him to come and to be a missionary there in their church, in their country. And he started out as a parish pastor right in the middle of the country, and it was in the area called Siberia. Now, I know that many of you would like it if I could have talked about a warm place where Lutherans are, like Jamaica, you know. And I know that this sudden winter storm and all the weather that we've been going through would make us think of a warmer climate, but we're going to talk about Siberia for just a little while. And, you know, we're, we're, uh, we know how to suffer, don't we? Okay, we can handle this. Um, he was put right in the middle of Siberia. And his job was not just to be a pastor to that immediate congregation, but to go to the congregations in that region and to be a pastor for them because in that country, it is very, very big. Do you know that there are literally 11 time zones from one end of Russia to another? So... If the people in the Far East, over by Alaska, are having church on Sunday morning at 9 a.m., Pastor Braden, uh, Braden on the other side of the country might be just finishing his sermon at 10 p.m. Saturday night. Okay, Pastor Andy, does that ever happen to you that you're finishing? 
Always, okay. <laughs> We're telling trade secrets here, aren't we? Okay, so it's that big, and yet within that big country, there are only 70,000 Lutherans in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Russia. Folks, there are 70,000 Lutherans between here and Minneapolis, probably a lot more than that, okay? And it's a much shorter distance. They are spread out, and they are gathered in 200 congregations, and most of them do not have their own pastor because they're too small. It's a struggling church. They were underground during the communist years, and many of them have left the country when they had the chance to do that. So our goal is to help them stay strong, to equip them, which is one of the words that we were hearing about, to equip these faithful people who are serving there. And so Pastor Braden was in this parish, and he would go and he would visit another parish and he would do the baptisms and communion and maybe have some extra lessons. Then he'd go to another one and they appreciated it so very much that there came a vision to expand it. And they said, so how can we reach the rest of these 11 time zones? And how can we make it so that when he leaves, there will be lay leaders who will continue the congregational life even when he or another pastor is not there? And so they came up with this plan, which was masterful. And it is called Equipping the Faithful. And he actually moved from the middle of Siberia to St. Petersburg, which is a large city which was the capital for many centuries, and there he is doing an online distance learning program for people who want to be pastors and who people who want to be lay leaders in their congregation. And he is also then traveling to do short courses all across this huge country. He may go from one end and cross 11 time zones to be closer to Alaska than we are even here in this continent and do a seminar. And this is how he is encouraging them to maintain, to survive, and then to grow as Christians and to reach out into the area. And you are part of this, folks. Let me tell you the difference it makes. There is a young man named Rustam, and Rustam lives in Siberia, and he is a Lutheran. Did you know there were Lutherans in Siberia? Okay. And Rustam lives in a big city in Siberia. It's called Ufa. Did you know there were big cities in Siberia? Okay. A million people live there, and there's a Lutheran congregation. And Rustam is from a traditional ethnic Muslim background called the Bashkir. Did you know that there are Lutherans living in Siberia, in big cities, who came from a Muslim background? It's an amazing world, isn't it, huh? And this is part of our global church. Rustam is a lay leader, and he is taking part in this online distance learning so he can be a stronger witness for Jesus Christ in this large city through his congregation in Siberia. And that, folks, that is how you are part of this picture because your support of Braddon connects you directly with that wonderful ministry that's happening there. And it connects you with a young man named Rustam, a Bashkir, formerly Muslim, Siberian man living in Ufa. And you are making it possible for him to get education and to be a stronger Christian and a witness to Jesus Christ. And that is one of the ways that right now, right here, we are living out Jesus' prayer that they may all be one. Thank you for your part in that and for your part in Christ's global church. Amen.